that's two cents. Okay, listen to this. This is Ephesians, no, oh, sorry. <laughs> this is James chapter 5. Starting at verse 7, ending at verse 8. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Now, one of the hardest things to do is to be patient through what we were dealing with before. Here's my list once again. The purifying process, the purging process, the pruning process, and the forging process. Don't we hate that? But the purpose is to destroy the works of the flesh that lurks within. See, we were, according to the Bible, we were born and shapen in iniquity. We are, we're on Pat's two cents part right now. We were born and shapen in iniquity. So sin, the ways of sin, all of that comes very, very natural to us. It's very easy for us to lie. It's easy for us to get angry, to be bitter, to retaliate, tit for tit, mm -hmm. or tit for tat, as they say, an eye for an eye. Yeah, you stab me, I'll stab you. Yeah, it's very easy to be that way. Comes naturally. It's ingrained in our sinful nature. Now, here we have been born again. We have been given a new nature through the Holy Spirit. But the new nature has to be nourished up in the faith. Our new nature has to be strengthened, developed, processed. Now, I can tell you all day long that I have forgiven. I can tell you all day long that I no longer resent. But the proof of the pudding is when that person that hit that sore spot in the first place walks through my door or I cross their path at the store. That's the proof. What am I feeling when I see that person? Is the air crystal clear? Or is the knot and the lump and the anger and the bitterness still there boiling up? Hmm, is our blood boiling? Or are we in perfect peace? If your blood still boils, baby, you go back to the manufacturer and ask for a double dip and a double dose of the Holy Ghost and ask him to enable you to forgive. See, one thing I love about God, he will not tell us to do anything that he refuses to enable us to do. Now, let's go back to the purging. When you're going through the purging process, it is very difficult because purging is a form of extracting. And it's painful at times to have something extracted from you isn't it? It's painful. And sometimes life happens to do this. Now, I'm going to share something with you. When my husband lost his eyesight, I miss my late husband. <laughs> anyway, when my husband lost his eyesight, there was an edge on him. He was always friendly, always outgoing, boisterous, uh, you know, really fun, loving, love people, the whole nine yards. He took care of business. He was a real man. But there was also that edge. You could see it in his eyes. I could look at some of his old pictures before we got married and look at his pictures after we had been married three or four years. 
and I could see the process had taken an effect on him. There was a tenderness in his eyes. There was a sweetness in his spirit. And he was always kind, but there was an added sweetness. There was an added vulnerability, a tenderness, a humility that took place as a result of suffering with blindness. Now, of course, we don't want that for anybody. Of course we don't. What I'm saying is life and its challenges are not there to beat us down. They're meant to be to beat us down from the enemy. But God takes that little bad boy, wraps it up in his hand, and he starts his work. And he works from within. And that's when the healing, the purging, the cleansing, the purifying, all of that begins to take place through the challenges of life. And here's the thing. Here's a secret. You want to know a real secret to this? Secret to success. The quicker you yield, the quicker you obey, the quicker you do it God's way, the harder you fight for holiness, for righteousness, for integrity, the quicker you'll come out. Now some come out because their faith brings them out. Others come out because the process is complete. God's work is done. Some never come out, but it doesn't mean that they don't win the prize. It means that there are some things in our lives that God cannot afford to remove. Because I hate to say this, there are some of us who need a leash tied to our lives in order to keep our souls free from the enemy. If we are given too much freedom, that rope that God extends to us, we will tie it around our own necks and hang ourselves with it through the choices we make. I'm going to stop there. I want you to think about that. You know how they say, oh, give him enough, enough rope to hang himself. That's what God does not want to do. So for some of you who are still dealing with some of these things, remember, God either has you in the playpen for your own good, has you in a confined situation for your own good, or he will not extend the length of that rope. He will not allow you to rip and run and have it all your way because your way will take you the wrong way and God does not want to lose you. God bless you. Something to think about.